Hey guys, in this video I'll be talking to Robert Sislow, who's Grant Cardone's production manager and also, in my mind, one of the best video producers in the world and definitely one of the fastest. The guy is an incredible inspiration and lives and breathes Grant Cardone. Unfortunately, in this 40-minute interview, the first 20 minutes, uh, you don't see my face when I talk. It was uh, some sort of a glitch with the program. But the second 20 minutes, about the 20 minute mark, you're going to see my face when I talk. So I hope you can get by this small issue because the video is absolutely incredible. You're going to learn a lot about how to produce, how to actually get yourself known, how to get attention, what it's like working with Grant Cardone and how to start taking action right now to get attention for you and your business and actually start growing your online presence in the best possible way. The guy has an amazing insightful look into success and you're not going to see that type of mentality that type of philosophy anywhere else because this guy works for grant cardone works with him 24 7 for a couple of years now i admire him i highly recommend you watch this video all the way through enjoy hey robert <laughs> what's up man what's up robbie how you doing man Good, good. Uh, well, guys, Robert. This at two a.m. <laughs> yeah, no, but but my fans know that I'm I'm usually up at these hours because I, I make a video every three four days that I bitch about having to meditate at these hours. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Anyway, uh, Robert is probably the guy I want to be the most right now. <laughs> uh, he he's basically uh, Grant Cardone's video guy, production guy, advertising guy. Uh, the dude is a master at promotion and branding and managed to hit income levels that most people don't even realize that, uh, you know, people without a business of their own could reach. Uh, so he's a huge uh, inspiration in many areas. And I think that his content is extremely related to the fact that you guys want to make videos because uh, I don't really talk about the technical too much, but Robert is a master of basically how to make it right, how to advertise right, how to brand yourself right, and how to promote in the best way. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Took a lot. Takes a lot every day. I'm still learning every single day about it. You know, there's always something new to figure out, always something new to understand. And um, yeah, I mean, it was interesting. You said the thing about the income levels. When I started, I was making, what was I producing? I was probably producing about 50,000, 50, 45 to 50,000 was like the baseline salary. And working for Grant, it really turned into this opportunity. Well, he's all sales and I didn't know anything about sales. I was good at the creative part. I was good at making things look flashy and exciting and really interesting and interested in documentary films and making things look pretty. But then it took a switch when there was an opportunity to start selling those services. And I had never sold over the phone or reached out to people or communicated that way. So I just started picking up the phone and that was Grant's words. I'm like, I don't know what to say. What do I say? What do I do? He's like, just pick up the phone and start calling people. And that's exactly what I did. I got hung up on. I got bitched at. I got screamed at. I got yelled at. And then I had a few people that were like, we love this, dude. Let's do some business. And then I closed my first deal. The first deal I closed, the contract value for the branding was 15,000 and I was super stoked about that. I'm like, once I got it and it came through, they signed it, they send you the credit card information. You're like, dude, I did it. Um, but you know, now I think the biggest deal I've closed was probably a hundred and 150,000 is the largest deal I've closed so far. Nice, so nice. working my way up. Well, um, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, as, as a coach, and many other people that listen to me are sort of the coach type or um, maybe they have a business of their own, but they want to focus on the artistic side, sure. the creative side. So I bet before you went, you know, you started working with Grant, you know, being like the creative uh, video guy, uh, many people kind of go to the direction where they're thinking like, you know, just build it and they'll come, you know, just kind of... Uh, do your thing, be artistic, be express yourself. Don't focus on sales. And, and they really like hate everything related to sales. Like even I, when I do coaching calls, I'm not like, you know, 
uh, I'm trying to be as little salesy as possible. I'm like, yeah, you know, let's make sure that works out. Let's do that. It's a good relationship. So how did that kind of change uh, when you started working with Grant and how did that affect your life? Wow, that was, that's a really good question because I was so focused on the artistic side of it. And I believe that. I was like, man, if I just make this one video, everybody's going to come and find it. They're going to want to do business with me. They're going to love me. It's going to be great. And I did that one video and nothing happened. And then I did another one and nothing happened. And I'm like, okay, what's happening here? But the, the, the point of the matter is I had to start to embrace the sales side. I didn't want to. I was actually afraid to do it because I thought if I started acting like a businessman as an artist, I would lose the creative side. Like that was my biggest fear. I'm like, well, if I put all this attention on the sales, you know, the processing, the putting together the deal, doing all that, I would lose the ability to be an artist. But actually, it enhanced the whole thing. It enhanced it. It made it actually 10 times more fun because I got to take the creative side of the video production and throw that into the craziness of a sales process. And, you know, that's how I went from making 50,000 to making 150 plus. You know, so it's in, in, I would say probably 10 months and, um, you know, it's to not embrace the sales thing. And that's, I think the biggest part about artists is that they get very caught up in the art. They're very like, I've done this beautiful piece of work. You should love me and exalt me. And, da, 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 da. and it's like, you're broke. You don't have any money. Like you can't, what can you do? You can't, you can't take that piece of art and ship it to somebody because you're worried about how you're going to put food on the table later. Now, I'm not saying that to disparage or talk down on artists. It's just, I think it's the piece that artists are missing is the actual sales portion because it takes a lot of energy to reach out. Like I've had, I think to close one deal, I have to call 150 people and actually have 150 conversations to close one deal on why they should allow me to do production with them or branding or advertising or build a show. And it takes tremendous amounts of energy to talk about the creative part because it's, yeah, I know I'm a good artist, but nobody else knows what that is. So how do you relate that to somebody that doesn't know anything about you? So, you know, they'll be like, oh yeah, he's the guy that does videos. I'm like, yeah, but do you know that there's like 12 tracks of music and 14 layers of effects and then all these little, like you don't know that because I don't tell you it. Or the artist that paints, it's the same idea. Well, I use acrylic paint and then I use water paint and then I put the paint outside in the sun for three months and then I come back to it. And you know, it's just processes that make it interesting. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the sales thing. Grouping together the artist and the sales together is what will actually make you successful. Yeah, I, I loved how you said uh, <laughs> that's the missing piece for the artist. It is. It's like, it's like, it's also, it's not just peace, uh, P I E C E. It's like also peace, like peace of yeah. mind. Cause it's, it's hard to create art when you're stressed <laughs> all the time. It is. It is. I mean, you're sitting there thinking, you're like, I know I'm good at this, but how the hell am I going to eat dinner tomorrow? You know? So yeah. Yeah. Just a small tangent question. Um, I, I was doing 3d modeling like art, um, you know, characters, uh, weapons, stuff like that. When I was 14 years old and I was one of the best people in the country because I was obsessed with it. But then I, I realized that I can make money off of it. And then I got greedy and I would only make art that would make money. So instead of asking like, what do I want to make? I asked like, what makes me money? And even today as a coach, I don't go for the clients that uh, would necessarily pay me just to do the kind of the process of coaching. I go for, for the ones where I feel like the most creative, the most, um, you know, fulfilled as uh, both in the art aspect and as a business guy. How do you kind of reconcile that where you, you got the sales part down now, so you can, you know, you can sell, uh, you got the art part down. So, you know, you're good at your craft, but how do you make sure that you actually don't, you know, start going for the money too much where you work with clients that you maybe don't like, you do projects you don't enjoy for cash. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, I'm, I'm going to go the complete opposite of you because I have a very different viewpoint on that. And here's why. I'm going to explain to you why. Mm -hmm. I used to be like that. Um, but at the end of the day, for me, it's, I, do, I am money focused. I'm focused on that. 
but I'm also focused on helping somebody. So for me, if I know, let's say like this is Joe, and I don't like Joe, but I know Joe has money. I know Joe has a service that he needs to promote. I would feel better about myself to just kind of push that, that, that thing aside and be like, okay, I'm going to do the job with Joe and get the jo job done because at the end of the day, my survival is the most important thing. My future is the most important thing. Being able to provide, you know, take care of the bills and, and everything that I need to do. At one point, you have to make a decision and just say, okay, it will be a pain in the ass to work with Joe. I already know it would be a pain in the ass to work with Joe, but if I work with Joe and I get the job done, Joe is another satisfied customer that's going to go tell a hundred other people about how good of a job that I did. Even if I don't like Joe, even if I think, and I wouldn't say that, you know, you, you don't want to say, Oh, Joe, you're an asshole. Cause we all have people that were just like, man, I don't know, dude, I don't know. Um, you know, so, so for me, it's, is, is the money potential there? Can I make a difference for that guy? whether I like him or not. And you know, what value could I bring to him? Cause maybe after working with me, Joe's not so much of an asshole anymore. You know, Joe might be more of a, a an interesting guy because I'm going to bring myself like yourself. Like you, you work on yourself, you're focused on personal development. And at one point, the deeper that you get into that personal development, you find out that whatever Joe is going through, whatever he's talking about or Susan or whatever, whatever stuff they start when, when it starts to get a little nuts for you, it's not about you. It has nothing to do with you. It has, it's more about them. Your job is to help them. That's it. Whatever, if they start fr freaking out or if they have a bad attitude problem now, if Joe is a drug dealer, I'm not going to do business with Joe. I do have some standards. I will be honest. <laughs> but if Joe is just kind of like, kind of like an annoying person, like, you know, like I, I would, I would put that aside to help him out. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going sense? back. I'm going back to your video. Like I, I've seen so many commercials of you from uh, Grant Grant Cardone TV, right? Yeah, Grant Cardone TV. From Grant Cardone TV, uh, so many commercials. I'm imagining like, do you like drugs? <laughs> Are you a drug addict? <laughs> <laughs> the best yeah, that's the, experience. <laughs> that's actually one of the things that why we built the network was because we actually wanted control over those commercials. We didn't want to have like you know, depressed, antidepressant medication or Viagra commercials or, you know, anything that was just lower than being entrepreneurial, being successful and being highly motivated. So that's actually a part of the reason why we had the network, why Grant built it, because he wanted a place where it was just informative without being interrupted by stuff like that. So yeah, so I wouldn't do anything with big pharmaceutical companies. Yeah, but and also probably you like it, when you take control of the monetization rather than, you know, have, for example, YouTube monetize for you, uh, you probably make a lot more money either way. So. It's yeah. I mean, you have, I, I mean, control is income. Grant talks about that all the time. The more that you control a process, the more that you control something, the, the greater your income is going to be. Yeah. I, I loved, I loved how you, you, you kind of changed, you know, my paradigm a bit. Uh, when you talked earlier about, you know, about Joe who needs help, like I didn't realize it, but you know how you said, okay, look, you make money, you help somebody, uh, he introduces you to new people that might need your help also. So it's like, it's, it, it's selfish to, to be like, oh no, you know, I'm, that's my, my art. So I'm only going to work with those that represent myself the best. Like right. it's selfish. Right. It's true. I had a guy, I had a guy, I called him and he said to me, he said, I'm not interested in communicating anything about sales. Are you trying to sell me something right now? I'm going to hang up the phone. I'm like, listen, sir, I'm not calling you to sell you anything. I'm calling here to promote your business. And he switched. And that's part of the sales thing. You know, like yeah. Joe, being, Joe being a, a guy who's very like reactive and very blah, 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 blah. You just have to go in. And this is, this is where the artist doesn't really, go into it's just the art but this is the sales side you now because now i have to like say okay i know my art can help him but i need to cut through all of his stuff for him to understand that i'm trying to help him out you know what i mean does that make sense yeah yeah absolutely i mean i i made um probably over a thousand cold calls this year yeah um and it was brutal i mean you know you talk to people you call them you want to help them 
And like you said, like a hundred people, uh, maybe 20 or 20 are going to be interested, but it's like, you know, you don't even get to the art yet. You just, you, first of all, you need to kind of like when somebody comes comes and contacts me from my YouTube channel, they watch my videos. Like they know who I am and they would like me and respect me. Sure. But when you cold call somebody or when you call somebody to, to sell him, and they don't know that you're that, that amazing guy that has these amazing abilities. Yeah. It, it, it's brutal. Like, it's hard for the ego. It is brutal. And that's you why know like, how you are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the more frequent that you do that, the easier it is for you to, to withstand that kind of, like, hit. You know, like, you call somebody and they're like, I'm not interested. It's like, I know you're not interested. You don't even know what I'm talking to you about. Of course you wouldn't be interested. And I take full responsibility for the fact that you're not interested. But I'd like, just because, sir, you are not interested, that wouldn't stop you for at least being interested for 30 seconds for me to tell you how I can grow your social media by 1,900% in 60 days, would it? And they'd be like, what? You see, so it's, 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 and that one I just really started getting good at. I, I watched Grant's uh, Mastering Objections webinar, which was like the thing that I struggled with the most was how do I handle somebody objection? I was oh, good yeah. at sales. I was good at the close. And then an objection would come up and I would just like bypass it and go, like, I would skip over it and I would just pretend I didn't hear it. Oh but yeah. That's a very crucial part to have to handle. And again, like if an artist is trying to sell a $7,000, 60 foot piece of work, you know, they have to know how to handle that. Like they could call like, the Hyatt Regency or the, uh, what is it? The JW Marriott or, or um, the Ritz Carlton and say, I want to put this piece of art in your lobby. Oh, that's great. How much is it? $7,000. And they're like, no, fuck, we ain't paying for that. What are you talking about? The artist needs to know how to handle that. So yeah. the, biggest, the biggest thing for me between the artist and the sales process is that missing piece of actually understanding how to sell. How to, how to liquidate objections. Exactly. Pretty much. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I remember first trying Grant Cardone's, uh, um, you know, when he taught that, like in Sell or Be Sold, that, you know, you take the uh, objection and you treat it as a complaint, like it, it made all the difference. <laughs> like, I, I it, would is. Make, it is. I, I would make like uh, cold calls and they would be like, um, I don't have time to talk to you. I would be like, oh, sure, I know. Uh, so when will you be available? And, uh, and then they're like, I'm not interested. Of course not. You don't know me. I don't know you. So anyway, <laughs> and, yeah. uh, it, it was amazing. Like people would be like, no. And then they, they'd flip. Like you said, like they just flip. Yeah, it's like they send, they send it to you and you're like, and you flip it over and you're like, you, you dodge it's, the it's bullet. like judo. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. The momentum to actually fuel yourself. Like when you, when you um, overcome an objection or reroute an objection back to them, it almost gives you more energy because you, you're like, fuck yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. You're like, like a Jedi. <laughs> did it. I won. Yes, this feels good. <laughs> Yay. Because oh, you're, yeah. you're not being pushed around. And I think I got tired of that. I got tired of being pushed around by people. I'm like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm done. So now when somebody says it, I'm like, Psh! You know, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, it makes you actually feel like you can control what goes on around you. Like you're not a slave to people's opinions and, and statements. Right. So they could right. say, this is the situation. You flip it and you realize, hey, like it's, it's liquid. It's, it's all subjective. You can change it. Exactly. It's exactly so, right. So, so uh, just relating to the... Um, Again, the selfish part. I have so many people that comment like, hey, I'm, I'm opening a channel, a YouTube channel because of you. Uh, but then they, they get stuck either because they feel like, you know, they don't really have what to say mm. or, or, or more importantly, because they don't understand the, you know, when I work with clients, it's different because I, I, I kind of guide them one-on-one. -on -one. You know, it's really intimate. But when I make videos I can only help so much and then they you know they want to open the channel and they, they get the link they get like okay attention equals money you make you get enough attention you get you get the money or at least you can use it to get the money right but but they can't make that link like how do I like use a video 
and, and make money. Like, am I not supposed to get that from, you know, from a boss or from, you know, so, so how would you say somebody who wants to start a channel or maybe just started, where do you, how do you make that transition from, I'm just like, like an idiot making videos, you know, I don't know why to like, Hey, I'm actually building a business here using these videos. Cause I know that's something you're really good at. Sure. And I, and I get that And part of what I do with, um, with our brand development programs, we do this with all businesses across. I mean, anyone, I, I don't have a business that I can't touch and help. Um, the key component of that, because I ran into it is what do I say after I do five videos? It's like, I feel like I covered everything, you know, and, and, how to get past that is to really identify what is the purpose of what you're trying to do. So if the purpose is you have to think of social media and YouTube, how do I put it as a, as like a fishing line that goes out into the big ocean. Now you know how large the ocean is. So if you drop five videos, I'm not making a dent in the ocean yet. If I drop 300 videos, I'm still not making a dent yet. Where you start to make a dent is where, you bring up the level of consistency and the frequencies to which you drop content. So what I'll do is, is like, you're recording this video, I'm recording this video, I'm gonna drop this on my YouTube page, then I'm gonna tape it and drop it on my Twitter, then I'm gonna drop it on my LinkedIn, and then I'm gonna drop it on my Facebook page, and then I'm gonna cycle that over and over and over again. So every piece of content that you have, you know, you tag it right, you drop it right. It's all based on these little subtopics of the part of the business that you're in. So like you're a coach, I would talk about every single thing that you do. I'd interview clients, I'd ask client questions, I'd put, I would do something as simple as, you know, I would do a 30 second video about you making a list of how to contact clients. All the stuff that you think is mundane and ridiculous is something that somebody's going to be interested in because you're com you're becoming so transparent and your name is becoming synonymous with the field you're in. So like video, Robert Sislo, you know, Robbie coaching, like that needs to be the target of what you're doing every day. So where do you begin? Look at this entire spread of everything you do and then make a video about it and then recycle the content over and over and over again, like a machine. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, this is probably not going to be a, some, a question that people don't usually ask during interviews, but you know, uh, probably a couple hundred people are going to see this. Everybody that sees this wants to be successful, thinks about success, um, maybe tried and, and fell you know, many times you know, where you kind of start mm -hmm. and then don't you know, go through with it. Um, with the resources, because again, you've been working with Grant Cardone for a couple of years now. Um, again, super jealous. <laughs> um, with the resources you have available, you know, the books, uh, the, the production company, the, uh, the uh, Grant Cardone TV, everything. Like, let's say somebody funnels into your content. Like, where should he go? What should he do? What should he watch? Where do you begin? So I'm not sure. Are you asking, are you asking me about me specifically or if they're trying to you, be successful? You and Grant have so much content, mm -hmm. so many products, mm -hmm. so much information, so many channels. Mm -hmm. Where would you recommend somebody to, to start, to go first, to kind of start embracing the empire of content that YouTube built? Good question. So you're, you're going to want to go to grantcardonetv.com and just start watching Grant's shows like Young Hustlers and Cardone's Zone. That'll start getting your mind right. That'll start putting things together. For me, um, I'm pretty big on LinkedIn. I've been writing a lot of articles lately about what it is that I do, plus my YouTube channel, plus Grant's YouTube channel. Um, now, as far as being successful, you know, how to, how to be successful with the resources that I had available the number one thing that helped me the most was Grant's training platform, Cardone University. And I train on that every day. And that allows me to get this in the right frame of mind, whether I'm going to be doing sales or whether I'm going to be doing promotion. Like it puts me in a space where I can start to really identify, you know, what avenues I need to take in order to sell my product or service. 
For me, if you're wanting to learn about promotion and marketing and what I do through Grant Cardone TV, you can go to grantcardonetv.com forward slash brand yourself. And there you're going to find a lot of information. I got a free ebook there. You can check that out. I will actually probably personally reach out to you uh, because that's, I'm very responsive across all those platforms to help identify what direction you want to go because success is dictated really on clearing up the mind, you know, really getting this out of like, literally you have to lose this in order to start be successful. And Grant said that once. He's like, I lose my mind to become successful. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. But now I know what he's talking about. Like, there's so many things that come in when you're trying to build something. You can't do this. You're like, who's talking? Stop it. So the, what, what you need to do is really stay completely focused on your direction, your momentum, what you're trying to build, and then go to people that are doing it. I would say that's the biggest thing. Like, Grant's done it. Grant is there. I'm just basically modeling the whole production thing after what he did because I saw it be successful and I see success through it. So for, for anybody who's looking, how do you come back after you fail, pick a guy, follow that guy and just dive all the way in and then look at the products that he creates. And Grant talks about that because you get a lot of people out there that will say, Oh, I'm the guru. I do this. I do that. It's like, great. Show me what you've actually created. What have you produced? You know, you get somebody in fashion who's like, oh, I'm an expert in fashion. That's awesome. What, what, where's your portfolio? What have you produced? What do you have? What's the following? What do you sell? Or you get somebody in um, automotive, same thing. It's like, what are you producing? And that will give you a pretty good indicator of who the real legitimate person is. Because anybody can post content and look good. Yeah. I mean. Uh, I, what do they have? What do they sell? Uh, you know, j just. Uh, just to tell probably I think I told you already Rob and, and also like everybody in my audience knows the 10 X rule is my favorite book of all time. I read it 10 times this year. Uh, probably going to read it five, six more times uh, next year. Um, I listen to grant every single day. Like there's not a single day goes by where I don't listen to grant for uh, 10 minutes, half an hour, an hour, two hours. And uh, on Grand Cardone TV, um, I've, I've had many rough patches in my life where even, you know, even the subject of money, like you, you kind of read it in books, you watch uh, movies, you know, so you go to seminars, but it's always like this, like this, this thing you're trying to get to, this distant thing that you're trying to go to. And when I listen to Grant, on uh, on uh, hit, on uh, daily hustler hustlers, um, and just in general, but daily hustlers especially, you kind of it's like when you know when you sit with a guy who's that rich, that successful, and that easy with money, he just talks about money like it's nothing, and, and, and you know, and it's also important and everything. And then you get infected with that, and you begin even it doesn't matter where you are financially you start thinking like him and I've never had that happen in any book or, or anybody I listen to. It's always been like, you know, you need to get there. It's about getting there and grant talks and you, you already feel like you're thinking like a rich person, right? You, you feel like money is abundant just by listening to him. Mm -hmm. And I never got that. Like not, not that fully for anybody yeah. else, ever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, I had the same experience. And when I started to switch and I started to look at money, it's just nothing more than really paper because that's all it is. Money to me is more symbolic of the amount of attention that you can get. Um, money to me is about the amount of confidence you can deliver about a product. Money to me is about knowing that I can help somebody and you'll get money for that. And you as an individual, as a, as a, as a spiritual person, are so much bigger than that piece of paper. And I struggled with that because I spent, I went through a really rough time. I was homeless. I lost everything. It was bad. It wasn't very good. And I've been on the upswing ever since I found Grant. But when I started to look at money as a thing equated to who I am as an individual is where I would get into trouble. When I started to look at money as just this thing that I used to grow and expand, that's where I started to shift. 
Yeah, it's, it's so like uh, money is not so much. My name is Robert Sislow, and I have X amount of dollars. That's who I am. It's no, my name is Robert Sislow. I'm big. I do all this stuff. I create. I outflow. I reach people. I communicate to people. I want to help people. This is what I want to do. Money is the byproduct of that. Money is not the primary focus. It's just the byproduct that exists over here. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like um, I think I, I came up with a new analogy right now because of you. It's like it's like the bigger you are as a person, money is like your shadow. And as you get bigger, it's like the shadow. Gets I like that. Bigger. The bigger you are as a person, money's the shadow. I like that a lot. It's yeah, good. yeah. So so you don't look at your shadow and you're like you know. <laughs> Get bigger or get bigger. <laughs> well, you just get bigger as a person and that will happen automatically. Yeah, yeah. I know I noticed that when you get better as a person, even even if it's not even related to money, just maybe work on your fitness, maybe you know, become a, a more productive person, a more happy person. You know, even if it's not immediate, it, it always follows to some extent, uh and increase in the money. Mm -hmm. Cool, Robert. So um one last thing is for my followers. Um, I checked out your YouTube channel and I saw that you upload content pretty much daily, right? Pretty much. I try to do it. I try to do it daily. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I miss it, but I try to do it daily. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I believe it's, it's a really, really good kind of, uh, how do you call it when there's like the opposite side of something like, a um, complimentary channel yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> to, yeah. to my channel because uh, like I told you before the interview, uh, you discuss a lot, I noticed, about you know, selling in your videos and branding in your videos and you know, kind of the how-tos, what to actually do. And you, you're not like these people that talk about it. You actually demonstrate in the video. You're like, yeah, do this, do that. I, it sounds like this. Mm -hmm. uh, which means you're doing it right now. You're not teaching something you did in the past. No, a lot of those videos uh, are I'm doing it on as I go. I'm like editing and creating and you're watching it happen. Yeah. So, so I, I guess I, I'm going to be sort of the catalyst for uh, people to come to you because every day or two I get somebody who's like, I'm going to start making videos because of you. <laughs> because I talk so every day I talk about this attention videos, attention videos. So I believe they should go to your channel if they want to know the actual how to's like, I, you know, I focus on, you know, how to not miss days when you want to do it, how to make as many videos as possible, but I exactly. never talk about what to do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah if they want to, if they want to know how to do it, they can come watch me. That's good. That's good. I like it. Yeah. Awesome. So I'm going to link you. Uh, any final uh, words, um, suggestions? Well, what would be what, what's something that your audience needs right now? What do they what What do you hear frequently that I could talk on real quick? Oh, I mean, my audience is like is like a bunch of uh, of uh, coke addicts. Only if it's success addicts, but they're <laughs> waiting for their fix. They're like, come on, because they yeah. they need that thing that's going to motivate them, uh, not to to make a small change, but they, everybody, and, and you probably know that about people in general, but like everybody's, they're, they're not waiting, you know, to learn how to start working out or to start, you know, doing something small. They're at the end, like the, the thresh, the end of their threshold of like exploding into massive action uh, with what we talked about, videos, attention, articles, uh, gym, meditation, like I pump them full of it every day. What's your opinion <laughs> about, about this? When should they start? Is it okay that they're waiting? Should they keep waiting for the perfect moment? Should they keep waiting to make their first video? How, how badly could they fuck up their life if they make a bad first video? <laughs> Dude, I'm going to say <laughs> All right. So, so Grant says this, and I live by this. You know, this the motivational idea. motivational. Yeah, here we go. It's going to smack, smack them pretty hard. If you're waiting for that perfect video, it means you're actually really lazy. <laughs> because a perfectionist, and you could quote Grant on this, I'm taking this is 100% from Grant and I adopted it. The perfectionist is lazy. They're lazy. I mean, think about it. I'm waiting for the moment. I'm waiting for that one thing to happen. And when it's perfect, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's like, 
and you're just talking to me about how they're on the threshold. Well, you are, you're responsible for the threshold. You're responsible for the fact that you haven't exploded yet because you decided that you needed to wait for a perfect moment. I don't know when you put that date tomorrow, three weeks from now, four years from now, when you finally say, okay, I think it's time to explode now. No, perfection is the lazy, is the lazy way. Um, when I first started doing my streams, I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. It was terrible. I actually think I still have my first stream. It was dumb. I was like, uh, I don't even know if I was saying anything, but I'd rather get it out and get a video out and get an article out or get something out so that people actually just start to hear my name. So the more frequent you can get with the content, which is what you talk about, the better it is for you. So this waiting thing, I mean, you're hurt. You're, the only person you're hurting is, is yourself because you've made the decision to wait. Awesome. Awesome. And so, so just undecide to wait and just, I would, I would, I would watch this interview and I would go create something right now. Right. Like now. <laughs> today I was, I was working on myself and then I'm like, you, we had the interview today and then I'm going to do two more videos after this, write an article, eat, and then that'll be my Sunday night. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And, and I mean, committing, like I, I find out that committing to a schedule, not a schedule, but a, like a routine of every day doing videos. Um, so I committed to five videos a day and, and I, cause I knew I have problems with integrity with the, you know, that idea of, you know, Oh, I'm not at my best right now. I'm, I'm angry right now. I'm depressed right now. And when you make so many videos every day, it's like you have no choice. So you're depressed and you still make a video because uh, you have no choice. Uh, you're angry, you make a video. You're tired, you make a video. And you know, I was sure like this video is going to be shit. People are going to hate this video. This one's going to suck. And the most successful videos I've had were when I was like pissed off, depressed, confused. It's actually the ones where you're like, okay, it's going to be an awesome video where it's an okay video. And when you're like, oh, this is going to be so bad, but I'm going to like expose myself anyway. Mm -hmm. that suddenly people are like, dude, I love this content. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. And, yeah. and you get comfortable now. You're like, oh, so people, they're going to respond. I, I can be me. <laughs> I would just be authentic. If you're depressed that day, you'd be like, look, I'm depressed and we're going to do a video today. Yeah. I'm pissed off. Damn it. I'm pissed off. All right, great. Let's talk about this. I, right, we're going to talk about it. I'm happy what, today. <laughs> what, I, what I realized when I started making these videos is that most of your audience is, you know, just com it's uh, the biggest common denominator. It's they're angry. They may be negative. They may be pissed. Uh, maybe they don't have anything to talk about. So actually, when you start a video from that place, they actually relate even better. Because if you just wait for the higher consciousness thing where you're like, feel all perfect, it, maybe, yeah, it lifts them up somewhat, but they're not necessarily relating with it because you're mm -hmm. not coming from their place. Mm -hmm. And when, when you make, when I make a video, when I'm depressed, people are like, I'm depressed. So I can make a video as well. Cause exactly. Dude, that's the majority of what I mean, but Grant talks about all the time. It's a broken planet. Everybody's broken, you know? So, so you you've got to think about, you know, what is the audience really like? I mean, they spend most of their time watching cats and watching the TV show, the walking dead. I mean, what are we really talking about here? Like, like what, what where are you at? And mentally to watch the show the walking dead you know so you got to think about that so you're exactly right you're hitting on it 100 percent, and i completely agree with you on it my most angriest videos were the most successful videos i've done so mm -hmm. yeah and and i mean uh, you know when people are like oh i couldn't i can't make like let's say a video a day i'm like dude you just take out the phone point it at you <laughs> And make a video. Talk. <laughs> well, this is an exception. We've done a 40 minute video. I usually do. I'm like, I'll just do seven to eight minutes. Like you could spare seven minutes, 30 seconds, 10 seconds, something. Yeah. 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 30 seconds. People love cause they're short three yes. minutes. People love cause they're, you know, really digestible and 10 yeah. minutes, 20 minutes, an hour people love cause they're long and they're valuable. Like I've had people tell me, I love your short videos. Keep making more of those. I've had people say, I love, you know, bite-sized where I can just eat it, you know, five minutes here, five minutes there. And I've actually had students, uh, clients of mine tell me, I got to your video list. And first thing I look for is the longest videos because I know mm -hmm. these are going to have the most content. Mm -hmm. So I realized it's also, it's important to have a super long video 
you know, a, a medium sized video and a yeah. short video to have a, and an angry video and a happy video and a stressed video and a good video and a bad video and everything. <laughs> So true, dude. It's so true. You want, you want to be married to your audience. Like, like you this do. is me. You love me, you know, in good and in bad. Like, <laughs> exactly. Because uh, these are the people that are going to buy. Like somebody who's like, who doesn't like you when you're depressed or who doesn't like you when you don't have anything to say, he's not going to be a client because he doesn't like you as you. Right. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Mm -mm. Be authentic. Awesome, Happy, dude. sad, whatever that is. So, Awesome, dude. So where do you think you're going to be in the next uh, few years in terms of uh, your development? Oh, I'll be a multimillionaire. I will have a high-rise condo with my girlfriend right now. And I'd like, to have, I'd like to have the largest business entrepreneurial network on which I'm helping everybody brand and grow their business and invested in real estate and just financially in a great spot and helping as many people as I can. Awesome. Well, well, you're, you're following uh, a guy who did most of these things. So, exactly. so you have a pretty good, uh, you know, I, 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 I bet on your odds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. Man. <laughs> bet on my odds too. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, how do I do real estate? Grand knows. How do I do <laughs> a big, no, he knows. Knows. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. So yeah, most people, they need to buy his products, you know, but you can just look at kind of, Hey Grant, how do I do this? <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I actually, I very rarely ask him for advice. Actually. I think I've, I've never asked him for advice. I think one time I asked him, what do I do? We were driving in his roles when he had the roles and we were doing a morning video shoot. We were talking about sales. And I think I said to him, I'm not really, I was like, man, I'm not a hundred percent on what to say. I didn't even ask. I just said that. He's like, just pick up the damn phone and call people. But he put so much content out there that, you know, that's it. Like the advice is there. The answer is going to be there, you know? So yeah, he's mm -hmm. kind of a living example. Yes, exactly. He, I also like how he keeps everything simple. So very simple. <laughs> everything is always practical. <laughs> like there's very never fluff, never no. theory. Uh, -uh. uh yeah that, that's the best thing i liked about grant you know in his books in his you know programs and when he talks he's like mm -hmm. like step one step two step three done step, about everything like <laughs> yes <laughs> awesome dude cool so uh thanks so much for um uh, you know being here sharing your time uh one day i hope uh we could do this kind of panel with grant as well of course. Uh, but I'll, I'll be in Miami, so we'll do it in person. <laughs> Let's do it in person, man. Let's make it real. Awesome, dude. And anybody who wants to maybe uh, work with Grant, work for Grant, any, any recommendation? Just fly to Miami and uh, I want to Yeah, drive. I mean, you, if you want to work with Grant, you could send a 60-second video to careers at grantcardone.com. 60 seconds. Explain why, and then you can, uh, they'll prop, the sales guys will reach out to you. Yeah, like, even, even if you're the janitor, you have to know how to sell. Pretty much. That's, that's basically the biggest lesson that I've learned. No matter what point you are in your life, you have to sell. Awesome. Awesome, dude. So thanks so much again. Mm. And uh, I'll put all the links in the description. So anybody who's uh, interested, and I expect everybody to be interested at this point. Yeah, uh, man, be interested. Come on. <laughs> yeah, at least if you're, not, if, you, if you're still here, you haven't made the video, you should have made probably. <laughs> So, so at least click the links and learn more. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So excellent. Awesome. Thank you.